Okay, thank you, Dr. Hulm, for giving up your time and expertise today to answer some questions on lifestyle and fertility in recognition of World Fertility Day. The questions were posted to Afas' Facebook page by our followers, and I know your answers will be of huge value to them. Please, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and Avita's Fertility Clinic? Um, hi, Saskia. Thank you very much for this invitation and for the opportunity. I'm Dr. Victor Hume. I'm one of the consultants, one of the partners at Avita's Clinic. We are located at Vincent Pilotti Hospital in Pinelands, Cape Town, sort of in the shadow of Table Mountain. When I look out of my window, I see Devil's Peak. Oh, wow. Lovely. Sure. Lucky. The room with the view. We like that. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so let's get started with the questions. Number one, how long does my partner need to stop smoking for to optimize our chances of conceiving? I think every day that the partner can stop. So I think it's really been proven that it's that smoking is very detrimental to fertility. So it certainly affects a woman's um, egg reserve because it limits the blood flow to the ovaries. It can affect the blood flow to the lining of the uterus, to the endometrium. And it can also shorten a woman's fertility lifespan, a fertile lifespan. And the same goes for a man. So we certainly discourage or encourage all couples to stop smoking. And um, there's not a specific time, you know, it takes 72 hours for sperm to be, re to be formed. Uh, sorry, 72 days, sorry. It takes 72 days for sperm to be formed. And um, the sooner he can stop, the better. Perfect, thank you. Okay, number two, if I'm 10 kilograms overweight, would it really affect my chances of conceiving? And if so, by how much? So obesity in women has been well studied and we know that about 5 to 10% of all women do not ovulate regularly, especially that group called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And those women, if they lose 5 to 10% of their body weight, they may start to ovulate regularly on their own without medication. It has also recently been shown that male obesity also affects success rate and even miscarriage rate in their partner. So for both, it is ideal to have a body mass index of ideally up below 25 or then below 30. Great, thank you. Okay, and do natural supplements for the treatment, for example, of PCOS and male infertility, do they actually work in just in your opinion? This is just an opinion answer. No, or I, no I'm not a big fan. I think weight control, healthy lifestyle, but one can f spend a lot of money and also attention on these supplements. So I do not generally encourage them in people who have a healthy diet and lifestyle. Perfect, that's great. Thank you. Okay, and then there's a question about being underweight. If I or my partner are underweight, would that also affect our fertility? Yes, underweight for me would be a body mass index of below 19. And many women will then, if they have so little fat under their skin, will stop ovulating. So that's one of the causes of absence of menstruation, absence of ovulation. And in men, it, it has not been that well studied, but um, certainly I would encourage people to have a body mass index of between 19 and 25. Great. And how much caffeine is too much when trying to conceive? Is caffeine really that bad for infertility? Um, there was a very good review in 2017 by the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, where they make the point that one can have caffeine in moderation, but more than two cups a day will probably have a negative effect on some people's fertility. So moderation. Okay. Okay. So you can still have your morning cup of coffee if you need yes. to, yeah. to get going. 
<laughs> and then we get to the evening, <laughs> Dr. Hull. If I like to have a glass of wine every evening, is that going to affect my ability to fall pregnant? Um, again, one unit of alcohol per day may not have a negative effect, but more than two units has been shown to have a negative effect. And of course, during pregnancy, so after conception, alcohol is completely to be avoided. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So uh, like a lot of things, everything in moderation is fine. That's, that's yeah. I think that's okay. Yeah. yeah, definitely. All right, so now a man's choice of underwear, is it really something that should be taken into consideration? So can some of the tighter varieties really make a, a difference to my husband's sperm count? Saskia, just say that question again, can what? Can? It's, about, it's about the man's choice of underwear. If, if my husband, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, the tighter yes. variety ones, will it really make a difference to the sperm count? Again, I think there's some men where the, it is natural for the body to control the temperature in the scrotum. So for some men, it may not be ideal to have the testis too close to his body. Um, again, I, I think it's important for some men then to have loose clothes, um, but I wouldn't totally spend too much time you know, there's probably other issues. There are other issues if there's not a pregnancy. But the biology says, keep the testers, keep the clothes loose in men who have an abnormal semen analysis. Okay, so if, yeah, so try and keep it as cool as possible if there's an issue, but generally it's it yeah. should be fine. Okay. On that topic, if I can, on that topic, just it's interesting that abstinence there's very good um, work recently that shows that short abstinence gives us a better quality of semen as opposed to long ab abstinence. So if abstinence is longer than 10 days, we certainly do find that the quality of the semen will deteriorate. And in men where there is a problem with the quality of the sperm, short abstinence, like even one to two days, will give us a better quality of sperm, especially if we do procedures like IVF. Okay, that, that kind of leads us into the next question what the lifestyle changes, what lifestyle changes can we make to help us avoid male fertility problems? So that's part of it as well. Yeah. Um, and what we've spoken about before is the healthy lifestyle. Yeah, I think of avoid obesity. Mm. I think shorter abstinence, I think to be aware of the frequency of intercourse. You know, they say that we are, the fertility doctors are passion killers because we tell people exactly what to do. But if one, if, if you only have intercourse once during the cycle, during the fertile window, the success rate is about half, as opposed to somebody who has intercourse every day or every second or even every third day. Yeah. That does make a big difference. Yes. And, but the, we, we come to you guys for help. So we have to listen to you. And it is true. I mean, it does sex can become a chore, but you, you guys are the specialists. You tell us what to do. We listen. And after we've got yeah. our baby, then we can go back to having fun sex again. Yes. And also, Saskia, and it's also too important to know when the fertile window is. And it's often earlier than what most people think. So the fertile window in a woman who has a 28 day cycle is usually the six days leading up to and including ovulation. So if, if a woman has a seven day bleeding cycle, so when she stops bleeding, she may notice that she gradually produce more mucus. And that's really when the fertile window is open. Okay. Well, that's very good advice. So it's very important for them to pay attention to that. It's not just your stock standard 14 days is when you need to do it. Yeah, no, it's before the day 14 already. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, can the use of steroids for bodybuilding cause male infertility? That is an excellent question because the, it's an easy answer. Male 
to give a man testosterone is like giving him a contraceptive. It suppresses sperm production. So he may, his libido may be good, but some men, if they use steroids for bodybuilding, they may even notice that the testis gets softer and smaller and the sperm will disappear. So yes, they mustn't do steroids if they're trying to conceive. Okay, and then vitamins. I know we spoke about natural supplements, but do you recommend any vitamins that both the man and the woman can take to, bo to boost their fertility? Yes, so the only vitamin that I would really support is vitamin D, D like December. So vitamin D, many of us are deficient, especially with winter behind us. So a vitamin D supplement may not be a bad idea unless you want to test your vitamin D levels. Um, and then of course, for women who want to conceive, folic acid is important. But for the rest, not, not good evidence. Okay, great, thank you. And would you suggest an exercise regime be started prior to trying to conceive would it only help us if we were overweight or is it recommended generally? I think for quality of life and for general enjoyment of life, I would recommend some form of exercise, but it doesn't have to be intense. It can even be just like going for a, a quick walk. But, um, but the, again, not, certainly not intense. Okay. Certainly, can you see me there? Did you, did you yes, break you up? Yes, you came back, yeah. yeah it's fine. Right. So, shall we do it again? No, it's fine. Carry it's on. Okay. So, a moderate exercise, quality of life kind of exercise, but certainly um, it's not compulsory to have extreme strenuous exercise. Okay. Excellent. That brings us to the last question. I think one of the most important ones. Um, my husband and I are in highly stressed industries and we are trying for a baby. How much of an effect does stress have on our chances of falling pregnant? Yeah, people often ask if they should stop work, for instance. And for me, the easy answer is, if, you exp if a woman experiences intense stress, then she will stop ovulating and she will stop menstruating. But as long as she has a regular cycle, then the, um, probably that stress is not affecting her ovulation and her, her fertility in that way. Sometimes couples have a lot of stress and they do not have intercourse because of their stressful lifestyles. And in that sense, also stress may affect um, their fertility. But for the rest, um, no, I don't think women or couples should make major lifestyle changes. Um, yeah. Not good evidence. Okay, good. It's just that they need to manage their... So if they use smoking to reduce their stress, for instance, or, or drinking too much, that kind of thing they'll need to manage more than the actual stress itself. If they're, yeah. still, if they're still ovulating, etc., still having yeah. a cycle. Yeah. I think also in that line is for a couple to know when to seek help. Yes. So if you are, if if, they are, if the woman is older than thirty five and she has not conceived after six months of unprotected intercourse, that's really the time not to wait too long, but then to contact a fertility specialist or a doctor who has special interest in fertility management for help and for further tests and advice. Definitely, sooner rather than later, even if you suspect something is wrong, because a woman knows her body better than anybody. So if they have any suspicions at all, we always recommend going to a specialist sooner rather than later and not spend too long with your GP, etc. Definitely rather go for um, an initial consultation with, with a fertility specialist and then you know where you stand and you can straight away um, you know, start the process and you don't waste any of your fertile years. So we definitely advocate that. Exactly. That's, that's perfect, Dr. Holm. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for your time and thank you to Vitas for always supporting IFASA in all of our initiatives.
And I also want to tell the people that are watching this to make sure that they follow you guys on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with everything fertility related. You guys have got a very active page on both of those social medias. So I think it's very important that people do like and follow so they can keep up to date. Thank you. We love what we do and we love success. Exactly. There's nothing better, <laughs> is there? <laughs> Perfect, Dr. Holm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saskia.